Hi, I'm Jen from House One, and today I'm showing how I built a console table with cane detailing on the door and drawer fronts. I fell in love with the design for a console table I found online, but at over $300, I just couldn't justify the price. So I sourced the materials myself and came up with a plan to build it for half the price. The design has two drawers for storage and a door, all fitted with an inset cane panel. Now I don't have the knowledge or tools to install the cane professionally, but I do have an easy DIY trick which I'll share with you later on using only basic tools. In the meantime, I got started by heading to the home center with a downloadable cut list to have a sheet of plywood ripped into strips. Once I got them home, I used a miter saw to cut the strips to length and labeled each part with a piece of painter's tape and a marker. To prep the base of each leg with a slight taper, I created a quick jig by placing scrap blocks under the end of a guide that I've created for my circular saw, but you could also just use a scrap board as a straight edge. Once I clamped the pieces in place, I slid each one by two leg under the guide to align with the marked angle on the leg and clamped the leg into place so I could make the cut with my circular saw. With the legs cut, I prepped the rest of the pieces with pocket holes drilled along the edges of the plywood sides and base and at the ends of the base and supports. I placed the one by two trim pieces on the table to hold the plywood sides three quarters inch off the surface so that they would set flush with the back edge of the one by two legs. I applied glue and then secured the plywood sides between the legs with one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. I also applied glue to the location of the one by two trim pieces, positioning them between the legs and then nailed through the plywood and into the back side of the trim to secure them in place. Next, I added the 1x2 trim onto the front edge of the base, overhanging the bottom side of the board, attaching them with pocket hole screws. To assemble the sides of the cabinet, I first positioned the top supports between them, aligning them with the plywood, not the legs, to create a recess in the back for me to later install the backer board, and an inset in the front so that the doors and drawers would set flush with the front of the legs. Next, I positioned the assembled base between the legs, Again, using a scrap block to create a recess on the back and another block to raise the height of the shelf three quarters inch from the bottom edge of the sides so that the one by two trim on the sides and the one by two trim along the front edge of the base fall at the same height. Next, I marked a center line along the inside of the cabinet and positioned the vertical center wall between the base and top supports and to the left of the center line so that it will act as a stop for the door. As a last bit of support, I added two more horizontal supports on the drawer side of the cabinet. Next, I placed the top upside down on the work surface and placed the assembled base onto it, flush with its back edge, so that I could drill shallow pilot holes and then screws through the supports and into the underside of the tabletop. It was finally time to build the door and drawer face frames. And for that, I used one by two boards and simple pocket hole joinery to create rectangular frames. To assemble the drawer pieces, I drilled pocket holes along the front and side edges of the base, front edge of the drawer sides, and bottom and side edges of the back piece. Using glue and pocket hole screws, I secured the base between the sides with their pocket holes facing outward. Installed the backboard on top of the base between the sides with its pack holes also facing outward to create an open face drawer that will be completed by the drawer front, which will attach to the very front, again using pocket hole screws. To finish the exposed plywood edges, I applied adhesive veneer using an iron and then trimmed the excess with a utility knife before sanding all the pieces smooth and applying paint. Once the paint was dry, it was time to install the cane Using scissors, I cut the roll of open mesh cane to a length of about one inch longer than the height of the drawer front. Repeat to size the panel for the second drawer front and door, leaving the full width of the panel. Center the panel and then use a hand stapler and 3 8 inch staples to secure the edges along the back side of each frame. If it seems too difficult to pull the cane taut, you can soak the panels in water for 30 minutes before attaching so that they cinch up a bit tighter once dry. Once the panel is stapled in place, trim the excess with scissors. To prep the door for installation, position the non-mortise hinges along the edge of the frame. Drill pilot holes through the holes in the hinge and into the edge of the door, and then secure it with screws. Center the door pull on the opposite edge of the door. 
I chose wraparound pulls. Secure the pulls with screws. Install the door inside the opening by driving screws through the remaining side of the hinges and into the inside edge of the front leg. To install the drawers, first separate the two parts of each drawer slide. Mark a center line on the height of each drawer side. Align the slide with the front edge of the drawer box and then screw it into place. Position the drawer box onto the drawer front, three quarters inch from its bottom edge and connect the parts using pocket hole screws. Rejoin the two parts of the drawer slides and then set each drawer in place inside the cabinet, resting on three quarter inch thick scrap boards. Slide the drawer slightly forward to reveal the screw holes at the back of the cabinet. Drive screws through the back hole and into each slide before moving the drawer slightly further forward to secure additional screws in each slide. It's finally time to install the back panel. Position the panel against the assembly and then slide it down and to the side to mark the location of the supports. Nail through the panel and into the assembly to secure it in place. Now you have a beautiful console table with cane accents and plenty of storage. I hope you enjoyed this project. For more easy woodworking projects and tool tutorials, visit the House One channel on thisoldhouse.com. I'm Jen Largis, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.